There is, in every artist that I've ever known, myself included, a saboteur. There is part of us that is screaming to create and finish and put it out there. But there is generally within all of us an equal or nearly equal or a slightly more than equal opposite propensity to destroy, to discreate, to resist the state of completion and to get in our own freaking way. Welcome to Kush After Hours. My name is Gregory Scott. It's been a while. I'm a little older, a little wiser. I feel like I'm a lot older, actually. Anyway, people bandy back and forth the words production, engineering, mix, song, arrangement, and performance, right? These are all highly interconnected and highly interrelated, but I would submit to you that they have a hierarchy, or rather, you can give them a hierarchy, and by giving them a hierarchy and understanding how they nest or stack, you can spot where you get stuck in your process or where you get on a treadmill or in a washing machine, as I tend to think of myself. You're spending a lot of time, maybe too much time, working on a song, and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Or it goes somewhere, and then all of a sudden, before you know it, you're back to square one, or square zero, or some other square behind where you were before. You're keenly aware you're going backwards. So here is the hierarchy of production. Put this at the top. The production is a mix of a recording of a performance, of an arrangement, of a song. That's kind of different than most people talk about these things or look at these things. And like I said, there is very little agreement on this kind of stuff. It's all arbitrary. These are terms of art. So I'm, I'm not spitting truth here, I'm giving you a framework. 98% of this comes from credit where credit is due, Mixer Man. This is where I first picked up on this, and I've added a subtle but I think important tweak. And there's a reason for this framework, because if you think about it, if you say, okay, we got production at the top, and we got song at the bottom. Right? So the song, really at its essence, a song is an idea. A song is a concept. A song is something that can be expressed any number of ways all the way through a, a production where people can listen to it on various media uh, to charting and writing notes on staff paper or humming, right? These are ways to express a song. A song is, is almost completely abstract to my thinking. We can disagree about that in terms of art, right? If you say, I'm going to write a song, that's great. That's your starting point. You're going to write a song. The next level up from that is the arrangement. When you come up with melodies, top lines, rhythms, harmonies, chords, transitions, all these things. That's where the arrangement starts to come together and the rough idea or abstract concept of a song starts to take place. I think a lot of you are going to recognize in yourselves the tendency to get lost in mixing when you're down here and you're supposed to be working on arranging, composing and arranging the song. And it's so easy in the modern workstation to blur the lines here. And to some degree, there's a very functional and great way to blur those lines and work on the mix as the arrangement evolves. But the problem becomes when you hold up arranging a piece of music, composing and arranging it, because you're tweaking out on a mix of things. It's, it's a fragment of an idea, right? When I was first in this game in the late 90s, early 2000s, I would spend days mixing what was essentially a drum beat and like a chord or something like that. I would just I wasn't really mixing, I was just playing with sound, I was geeking out, and I, I get that, right? It's, it's something about that process is addictive and really satisfying. Uh, at the same time, for other parts of me, really the part of me that's an artist that wants to complete things, that process is destructive. It's addictive in all the wrong ways, and it is unsatisfying as fuck. So, you've got your song taking shape into an arrangement. As the arrangement takes shape, a lot of times what happens now, again, the lines get blurred, but once upon a time, the arrangement would generally be written out. Somebody would be mapping the stuff out on a piano and then writing out the different parts and coming up with a score or something like that. And when you had an arrangement, that's when people could start working on the performance. And it was always live musicians because that's all there was, was instruments and players. With technology evolving, that's gotten blurry now. And so as you're composing something, 
And as you're arranging something, you're also performing it these days, whether that's you got a keyboard in front of you and you're just sort of pecking notes out, or maybe you really know how to play the instrument or your guitar, or maybe you're just drawing lines on a MIDI graph, or maybe you're just pulling in loops from somewhere, right? But the, the point is that somehow that music has to be performed, whether it's by somebody who created a loop or by you creating your own loops or you creating your own tracks from start to finish, however you do that. There has to be a performance, and then that performance has to be captured in a recording medium. And again, the lines get blurry for us, right? Because, huh, if you are got a virtual instrument pulled up and you're throwing up MIDI notes and you got this thing, you're like, oh, this is great, and you've got a beat underneath it, and now uh, you've got some chords taking shape and you're trying to like map out a song and you got the first minute and an intro starting to take form or whatever. This, this hierarchy gets, you can see how it gets really blurry in the modern workstation. And, and so it's very easy to confuse what your job is and when. Because these things used to be kind of almost dogmatically linear just by the nature of the technology and the way music was made and performed and written. That's not the case now. And so it's a kind of a recipe for really getting lost in this process. And for many people, I think, actually having trouble ever getting to the finish line. And that's understandable. If you're in that boat, if you've been, say, working on music for a year or two years and you don't have any completed songs to show for it, this is probably why. It's probably because you don't have a clearly defined process uh, or even a definition for success. I'm going to pull in some business ideologies here. But if you can't define success, what it looks like, and you don't have a process for getting yourself there, it's going to be really hard to get there. And at first, there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of clawing your way and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And everybody, we're all going to have our own unique paths here. But there are some lessons that you could take away from those of us who have crawled across the finish line. And God knows I am not the most prolific writer on the planet. I have other priorities. I have business. I have family. I love writing music. It's very important to me. If I release two songs a year, I'm very happy with that. I think that's amazing. Some people want to write 20 songs a month. That's great. Knock yourself out doesn't really matter. The point is, if you know how to get across that finish line, it's very helpful. So understanding where you are in the process and taking a look at your work and maybe even taking a look at, at finished work and understanding how you got there, you might be able to see how these things plug in. And you might be able to see how maybe when you're arranging the song, picking the effect that goes on this instrument isn't terribly important. Maybe it is. Sometimes an effect is integral to a sound and really helps to create a vibe. And I don't want to step on that. I just want you to start looking at these things and asking maybe the right kinds of questions if you find yourself getting stuck and being like, okay, I understand I am mixing when I should be arranging. I understand I'm trying to capture a performance of something that I don't actually have composed. So I don't know if that's helpful to you or not helpful to you, but I find that a lot of times people will argue sort of semantically about what's production versus what's engineering. I find those debates largely academic because to my thinking, the people that are having those debates aren't really trying to get any point of clarity that helps us in any pragmatic way. They just have an idea of what something is and they want to fight about it. That's great. You can knock yourselves out if that's your game. But here, we're trying to unknot some of these sort of traps that our minds and our egos and our insecurities weave into the process without our being aware of it. And what I think is maybe the most insidious about all this stuff is that there is in every artist that I've ever known, and myself included, a saboteur. There is part of us that is screaming to create and finish and put it out there and have it be loved or hated or whatever it is that we want out of it provocative or soothing, but there is generally within all of us uh, an equal or nearly equal or a slightly more than equal opposite propensity to destroy, to discreate, to resist the state of completion and to get in our own freaking way. And it's that kind of stuff that we really, as we get older and we get more time under our belts, we got to get a handle on that crap because it'll just keep bringing us down. And in my experience, that resistance never goes away. And I don't know, I don't really think it ever gets much less than like 48%. The most functional, prolific artists, I think, are still in many ways going to war on a daily basis. They just have a lot more momentum 
and they have a lot more productive habits to help them overcome their own tendencies towards negation. And the only thing really that separates them from us, in my experience, is process. They have habits and routines that they lean on because with all things in life, but especially with stuff like this, the more you can kind of be an autopilot, the better off you will be. The more you have to think and engage the brain in some sort of a problem or puzzle solving or logic based or rational kind of thing. Mm. That's why nothing will kill a session quicker than a technical problem on a freaking computer. You know this. When something crashes or your session gets partially corrupt, or you can't open it or plugins not working, whatever, it just brings the whole freaking thing down because the parts of your brain that you have to engage for that kind of stuff are kind of the polar opposite of what you need to be open to to receive the ideas and hear them and express them. So, I don't know. Production is a mix of a recording, of a performance, of an arrangement, of a song. Write that down. Study a little bit. See if it helps you and see if you can figure out the ways that maybe you're getting a little lost in one of the processes or the steps or you're skipping over steps, you're blurring steps uh, unproductively maybe. Uh, or maybe you're doing great and you just think, eh, whatever, this guy's full of shit. Wouldn't be the first time. Won't be the last either. Gregory Scott, thanks so much for your patience. Uh, good to be back. Looking forward to more of the same. Don't get used to the set. This is very temporary. I'm about to redo my entire studio because I'm a freaking idiot. More on that later. Take care.